having brought us thus far. We are trusting you that as we call upon your name this day, you will hear us and you will answer us in the name of Jesus Christ. We are asking the Lord this morning you will pour upon all the spirit of prayer and the heart to intercede that your name alone will be glorified. Thank you, our Father and our God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And the saints of God will say, Please be seated. For over a month, we've been saying that today is a day of praying and fasting. We'll be praying specifically for our nation and for the forthcoming elections. If you recall, we did this last in 2015. Why are we doing such a thing? The Bible says in the book of Psalms, it is better to put your trust in the Lord than to put your confidence in man. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put your confidence in princes. So even when nations come past you around, when we call upon the name of the Lord, we will have a breakthrough. Amen? Amen. Our confidence is that God will hear us today. And I want you to believe that your prayer will make a difference for this nation in the name of Jesus. Don't be discouraged. Many people are discouraged, and that is one thing the enemy uses against the believer, discouragement. You know, an elderly person looked at the young boy. They were complaining about the nation, and uh, he said to him, said, God is in control. The boy just said, ah, that's what you elders used to deceive all the young ones. When you have collected money from the leaders, you come back to the church and tell us that uh, God is in control. We will not pray. This time we are praying. Don't become discouraged. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. But I want us to look at the picture that God paints and why we are doing what we are doing. In the book of Ezekiel, the first reading that we read, chapter 22 and verse 23, I'd like to read from not from King James, uh, from the contemporary English version of it. He said, King James said, And the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Ezekiel, son of man, tell the people of Nigeria that their country is full of sin, and that I, the Lord, I am furious. The leaders are like rolling lions, Tearing apart their victims, they put people to death. They steal everything of value. Husbands are killed, and many women are left widows. The priests ignore my law. Not only do they refuse to respect any of my sacred things, but they don't even teach the difference between what is sacred and what is ordinary. Between what is clean and what is unclean. They treat my Sabbath like any other day. And so my own people no longer honor me. Nigerian officials are like ferocious wolves. Ripping their victims apart. They make dishonest living by injuring and killing people. And the, then the prophets... Of, of the church cover up these sins by giving false vision. I have never spoken to them, but they lie and say they have a message from me. The people themselves cheat. They cheat and rob. They abuse the poor and take advantage of foreigners. Verse 30. This is why we are here today. He said, I'm looking for someone to defend the city and to protect it from what? My anger. As well as to stop me from destroying it. What happened? Marshall. He said, I'm looking for somebody to defend Nigeria. To stand in the gap to stay back my hand from destroying this land. But I dare say to the Lord, 
Because of the temple of Christ our light, today you will not say you have not found somebody. Has he found us? I can't hear you. Has he found us? Has he found us? If you are going to pray, say, Lord, you have found me today. I mean it because if you fail to pray, God will hold you accountable. I want you to commit yourself and say, God, you have found me today. Some people are not raising up their hand. Don't, don't bother. It's, it shows that you are not going to pray. But if you are going to pray for and defend Nigeria today, you know, the Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. But they are what? Mighty through God. To do what? Pulling down of stronghold. I believe that today your prayer will leave a mark on Nigeria. It, would, it will do great damage to the kingdom of darkness. He said, but I found no one to stand in the gap. That's why we're sharing today. Divine intervention by standing in the gap. He says, so, in my fierce anger, I will punish the land for what they have done, that they will know that I'm furious. The Lord, when you say, I, the Lord, have spoken this. But I believe that our story will become different. I say our story will become different. If only you would follow simple instructions. We are here, you know, at the wall of Jericho. The captain of Lost was standing. And Joshua approached him and said, On whose side are you? He said, Nay, we are not on anybody's side. We are not politicians. There may be politicians among us, but this gathering is not a political gathering. We are children of the Most High God. We are not on anybody's what? Side. So, prepare your heart not to pray with a preconceived notion that this must happen or this must happen. I want to plead with you, just for one moment, be open-minded. You see, what we are doing is in the will of God. What we are doing is according to the counsel of God. And the Bible says this is the confidence we have. That if we pray according to the will of God, he will hear us. And once he hears us, he will do what? He will answer. Don't close your mouth. You know, in the second reading that we read, that's in the book of Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 2. In 1 Timothy chapter 2, this is what scripture says. 1 Timothy chapter 2. From verse 1. He says, I exhort therefore that first of all supplication, prayers and intercession and giving of thanks be made for what? All men. And now for what? The kings and all that are in authority that will lead us to what? A quiet and a peaceable life in all godliness and what? Honesty. Verse 3 says, for this is what? And what? In what? It is good and acceptable in the sight of what? Of God. So what we are doing this morning, to pray for our nation and to pray for those in authority, and those who will be coming into authority, is in line with the will of God. It's acceptable to him. We give the first condition in verse 8. It says, I will therefore that men everywhere ought to pray Lifting up what? Without wrath. And without what? Doubting. Pray this day with a holy heart. Without wrath, without doubt. You may be angry and dissatisfied with the government. If you are going to pray with that animosity, you won't succeed. Drop it. That's the condition. We have come as children of the Most High God. We follow the example of our our father Abraham, God was going to destroy Sodom. And he approached Abraham and said, Abraham, this is what I want to do. God stood, I mean, Abraham stood in the gap and said, Father, if you find so, so and so righteous people, will you still do? He said, no. He went as far as, can I find 10 righteous people in Sodom? I believe 
that God will still find righteous people. There are remnants in still in our land in the name of Jesus Christ. The same thing happened too in the book of Exodus. God was furious against Israel and wanted to destroy uh, Israel. But Moses said, no, God, you can't destroy Israel. Please, what will people say? That you brought them out. You can't, you can't fulfill what you said. The Bible says, and God repented. Intercession can stay the hand of God. Intercession can bring judgment. Also, as intercession, can bring down the blessing of God. And so that is what we are doing today. We want to follow example of people of old and be able to do it the way he ought to do. See, God takes note. Let's look at it in the book of Ezekiel chapter 9 from verse 1. I want us to look at what God is saying again and what we are doing so that you get yourself committed to this. Forget your... You see, some of the prayer points we raise, if God answers us today, we will not be raising them. He cried out in my ears with a loud voice saying, Cause them that have charge over the city to draw near. And every man with what? His destroying weapon in his hands. That is what, that is, what is happening. Everyone with what? His destroying weapon. What? Verse 2 says something like this. It says, And behold, six men came from the way of the higher gates. With lie towards the north, and every man a slaughter weapon where in his hand. And one man among them was clothed with linen, with a white inkhorn by his side. And they went in and stood beside the brazen altar. Verse 3. And the glory of God of Israel was gone up from the cherub wherein he, whereupon he was, and to the threshold of the house. And he called to the man clothed with white linen, which had the writer's ink on by his side. Verse 4. And the Lord said to him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem. Set a mark upon the fourth head of them who are praying. So today, you see, if you are not only praying to bring answer, God is taking note of what we are doing. He will put a mark upon the people. Why does he put a mark upon people who are praying for the city? It's because anybody who tells you there, will be, there won't be trouble ahead is a lie. Whether economic, social, with challenges ahead, maybe not trouble, there are challenges ahead. He said, who cry for the abomination that is done in the midst thereof? Verse 5 says, and to the others he said in my hearing, go after him through the city. And do what? Smite. Don't let your eyes spare, neither do what? Have pity. What did he say? Slay utterly, old and the young, maid and little children, and also women, but come not near any man upon whom is what? Is the mark. And begin where? In modern English, begin where? from the church begin from the church <laughs> he said then they began where age by age I pray God will help us so we need to take what we are doing today very very serious we are going to pray we are going to call upon the name of the Lord before you can intercede and stand in the gap, you must identify with the sins of the people. In 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, I want you to understand a few things. 2 Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 14. There is need for us to first and foremost repent. He said, if my people, which you, is you and I, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from what? Their wicked ways. It appears that the unbelievers are not the problem. The problem is most of us who say we are children of God. Those of us who are called by the name of the Lord. Those of us who say praise the Lord. Those of us who lift up hands, but the hands are soiled. No. 
He says, if we will turn from our wickedness, you will do what? He will forgive our sin. He will then do what? He will heal our land. Don't say their sins. Don't say the politicians. Leave the politicians alone. Let us take responsibility like Daniel did. Look at how Daniel did it in Daniel chapter 1. Chap Daniel chapter 9, sorry. In Daniel chapter 9, this is what scripture says. Daniel chapter 9. It says from verse 1. It says, in the first year of Darius, the son of Ahasuerus, the seed of Medes, which was made king over the reign of the child, in the first year of his reign, say, I, Daniel, understood by the books the number of years whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet. That it will accomplish 70 years in desolation of Jerusalem. And I set my face to seek the Lord God, to seek by prayer and supplication. With what? Fasting sackcloth and ashes and i prayed unto the lord my god i made what confession we will need to confess the blood has been shed just a few days ago the plane crashed with young officers automatically the women became widows as the scripture said innocent bloods have been shed everywhere the ritual, just when there was that two days ago, the paper sky, a man entered the village, just caught somebody's head and ran away with the head. Why in these seasons? You may say, well, it's not you, but you're in this land. It says our leaders in church have profaned the, with the same word God did not send to them. Christian groups in dozen political parties, and that's not what God has called us to do. We are not politicians, beloved. We are children of God. And I know that God will send us to amend things by his grace in the name of Jesus Christ. But we need to cry out to God today. We need to acknowledge that we are, this nation has shed innocent blood. There have been injustice left, right, and center. We want to acknowledge it before God. Repent then call upon the name of the Lord. And as we begin to call upon the name of the Lord, you know, you will understand a few things that the Lord will have to help us. Men will not help us. If you listen to what is going on and want to be politically correct, you will, be, you will miss it. You will miss it. Imagine an, somebody ask a question and say, which nation imports what it produces? They say it's Nigeria. It's only us. You know what is so annoying is that we've degenerated to something else. The other day, the papers were carrying and saying they were threatening people who rig election that they won't give them visa. What is visa? Imagine the insult that is visa you are using to threaten the citizens of Nigeria as if we don't have a nation of ours, as if our nation is so useless that that place is better than our own. It is what we have turned our nation into. Is that not you agree with me? Threatening us with visa. What are we going to do there before? A place where they only drink tea and biscuits. They don't have pandemium to eat. I don't know why you want to go there. <laughs> you know, it's true. Personally, my wife tells me, I hate, I hate to leave this nation. You go there, they'll give you pizza. What is pizza? You won't find real food to eat. And that is where I want to go. That I felt, I, I began to weep in my heart. It's visa, visa. We'll, God will forgive us. It's what we've turned ourselves into. Outside Congo, I don't think there's any, any nation endowed with mineral resources as we are. What is our problem? It's not our leaders. So it is you and I who are following them. They will come to see the streets. They will give you, maybe not you, they give you one derrick of rice and toothpaste. And you say that is all. You see, a dog carrying bone in his mouth can never bark. You eat your destiny. 
I'm not a politician. I'm not on anybody's side. I'm on the Lord's side. But I, you know why we are praying? I believe that God can change our circumstance. Let him set over us a leader that will not be wicked to us. Whether a Muslim or a Christian, I'm not choosing anybody. Are you hearing me? It's not, it's not a choice. All we are saying, God, let your cancer stand for this nation. We want to take charge of this election in this room and determine what will happen in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray the Lord will give us understanding. So this, you should be proud that you're a Nigerian. Even if you are carrying other citizens' uh, passport, you are still a second-class citizen. One day at one of the immigration in one of the nations, the man was carrying a British passport, but his skin color is my skin color. And the man looked at him and said, how did you acquire this? Ah. I felt bad for him. If he was carrying a green passport like my own, you think they were asking where he acquired it from? No. He was carrying it for just to tell him that what? It's a second class citizen, no matter what they do with you. Sorry about that. I'm not trying to offend anybody, but I want to provoke you so that we can pray for this nation. Our nation is good. I say our nation is good. Our nation is good. God will turn things around for us. That's why you are going to pray and that's why I'm going to pray. Let's stand on our feet. I want you to thank God that you're a Nigerian. The choice is not made by you. The one you acquired is the one made by you. God saw that this is where he has sent you. You didn't, you did, he didn't negotiate with anybody. You didn't choose your parents. God chose you to be a Nigerian. I want you to say, God, thank you for making me a Nigerian. Thank you because I am a Nigerian. You see, you are not opening your mouth. You are ashamed to be a Nigerian. No. Things will change for us. The Bible says at a time, it was hard that God visited Israel with bread. And men will begin to return. That's in the book of, of Ruth. He said, and men began to return to their destiny. Men began to return to their roots. Let's begin to thank God for this nation. We are going to repent for all our grumbling, all our cursing, all, but let's begin to thank God. You may look at yourself and say, what, what is there to thank God about Nigeria? No light, no Nepal, no water, secure. Leave it. That is temporary. God, that's why you are praying. If there is no solution, if there is no answer, we won't be praying. So that's why I want you to, in faith, you are thanking God because you believe he's going to do something for this nation. That's why you are thanking him and say, Lord, I thank you, I'm a Nigerian. Thank you, Lord, because I'm a Nigerian. We are asking for, stand, for divine intervention by standing in the gap. God said, I am looking for somebody who will stay my rod from this nation. That's why you are here. We are walking in agreement with God. Lord, I thank you because I'm a Nigerian. Daniel in praying didn't say, they. He said, I made confession on behalf of the nation. I want you this morning to begin to say, Lord, we are sorry we have sinned against you. As a nation, as a church. Let's ask God to forgive us. We have shed innocent blood. We have cheated, we have robbed. Everywhere, every sin you can find in Nigeria, confess it. Admit it before God, because God will pardon us. That is why we have dedicated this Sunday, and there is a sacrifice on the altar, the blood of Jesus Christ for us. That's why we, we are invoking the power of God over this nation. Lord, we want to acknowledge that we have sinned against you. Corporately, individually, everywhere as nation, there have been injustices. There have been failure. We have cursed our government. We have spoken evil concerning our government. Let's acknowledge it that we have sinned against God. If we fail to acknowledge, we are saying we want to continue with what we are doing. No, we want to repent. We don't want things to be like this for us. We don't want things to be like this for us. 
God can change our circumstance. Let's ask the Lord to forgive the church. You may say, oh, our church is not doing any of those things. That's not the issue now. We are, we are part of the body of Christ. That the church has failed this nation. It says our leaders are saying things that God didn't send them to say. He said the prophets are prophesying for money. He said, I did not send them. Let's say, Lord, forgive us as a church, as the body of Christ. Remember, you made a promise to God. You lifted up your hand and said, God, you will find me to stand in the gap today. Fulfill your word to him, not to me. If you close your mouth, it is well. But remember that as we open our mouth, the man with the ink on is marking us. Is marking us. Is marking us. Let's begin to plead the blood of Jesus Christ upon Nigeria. Please, if you can project for us the map of Nigeria, we will stretch forth our hand and begin to plead the blood of Jesus Christ. I don't know whether you have it, but that's our flag, a symbol of our nation. Let's begin to say the Lord, well, let's begin to plead the blood of Jesus Christ upon this, upon this nation, from the north to the south, east to the west, everywhere. The blood of the Lamb of God. The blood of Jesus Christ. Let's begin to say, Lord, let the blood begin to speak for Nigeria. Let the blood begin to speak for Nigeria. Begin to speak for Nigeria. Lord, let the blood of Jesus Christ begin to speak for us. We have no other nation to go to. We have no other nation to go to. The Bible says, if we be willing and obedient, we will eat the good of this land. There is so much good in this land, I believe. God is not a waster, he's not a wicked person. He can't put so much people in this land without resources. No, it is us who have not done well. But we are going to say, Lord, we plead the blood of Jesus Christ over Nigeria, over every state. We plead the blood. We plead the blood. Over every state of this nation, the federal capital inclusive, Lord, show mercy to Nigeria. Show mercy to Nigeria. Show mercy to this land. Lord, be merciful to Nigeria. Lord, be merciful to Nigeria. Lord, be merciful to Nigeria. Lord, we are sorry for where we have missed it. The blood, innocent blood we have shed. Robbery, the cheating, the wickedness, the injustice, Lord. We are asking that you forgive us. In Jesus' name we pray. We are going to say, Lord, intervene in the affairs of Nigeria and restore to us the lost glory. That God will restore to Nigeria her lost glory. Her lost glory. Someone said, he said those days in Britain, the only three currencies that you can use for exchange, the dollar, the pound, and the naira. What has become of Naira today? Ah, please, let's ask God to have mercy. To restore our lost glory. Our lost glory. Our lost glory. That God will show mercy and restore in every sector. Whether in the education, in the economy, everywhere that God will restore the lost glory. God will show us mercy. Let's plead for mercy.
Father, show great mercy in this election. Anybody who wants to share blood, his own blood will go for it. No innocent blood will be shed in this land. Enough is what? Enough. The Bible said that whatever two of us shall agree on earth as touching it, God will do for us. I want you to pray and say, Lord, we forbid the shedding of blood in this land in the name of Jesus. And that anybody who attempts to shed blood, the person will go for it. I want you to pray. I don't believe that anyone in this assembly wants blood to be shed. Open your mouth and pray. Lord, come in this election and things lead to this election. We say no blood. Your blood will not be shed. My own blood will not be shed. The blood of Jesus has been shed for this land. That's the only blood that will speak. Lord, make it impossible for men and women to shed blood in this land again. We forbid blood shedding in this land. We forbid blood shedding in this land. Through riot, through anything, we say no to the shedding of blood. Beloved, open your mouth and pray. It is crucial. We say no to shedding of blood. We decree it. We decree it. The Bible says we shall decree a thing and it will come to pass. We will decree it today. We will exercise the authority. Hey, beloved, we say no to shedding of blood. We refuse that any blood will be shed in this election. Your blood will not be shed. My own blood will not be shed. No blood will be shed in this election. Father, we say no. We refuse it. We stand in the gap today. God, we stand in the gap today. We stand in the gap today. Heaven bear witness. Heaven bear record that we stand in the gap for our land. We say no to blood. We say no to blood. The blood of Jesus is sufficient. The blood of, of Jesus is sufficient. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's decree that there will be peace in our land. This election will not destroy us. We will not be destroyed. We want God to give us peace. The Lord to take absolute control of every election, the proceedings. Let's ask for the peace of God upon our land. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. We're going to pray. God, expose anybody who wants to shortchange the people. You know, the way they shortchange people is by rigging the election. God, expose anyone who wants to, I mean, shortchange the will of the people. Anybody who wants to impose their will on us, God, expose them in the name of Jesus. Let's begin to pray. Expose them. Beloved, trust that your prayers will produce results. We are taking a decree. We are agreeing together that everybody, anyone who wants to impose their will on us, we refuse it. Only the counsel of God will stand for Nigeria. Only the, only the counsel of God will stand for Nigeria. Not the counsel of man, not the counsel of, of any woman. Let only the will of God stand. Anybody planning to shortchange Nigeria, beloved, we say no, we say no, we say no. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's pray to God and say, Lord, don't set a wicked leader over us. See, when it has nothing to do with religion or political party, 
because you are just looking at the presidency. That's not all. The local government is there. The state is there. The House of Assembly is there. Senators. It, that, any wickedness can be in any form. We don't want wicked people to rule us. Let's say, Lord, don't set wicked people over us in this election. In the name of Jesus. Let's say no to wicked people. We ref God, don't set a wicked king over us. Don't set a wicked king over us. Anything that will represent wickedness. You are the only one who knows. In Jesus' name we'll pray. Ezekiel 21 and 27. You see, one day the prophet by the name Samuel, God said, go and anoint a king for me. He got there, he saw, he looked at pedigree, size. God said, no, I don't choose like that. There's somebody, God, that puts something in the heart that will bring Nigeria to where Nigeria is. I don't know the person. You don't know the person. We don't know how the person is going to come. But that is the person we want. He said, God will overturn. 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 It shall be no more. Until he come, whose right it is. And God will give it to him. You agree with me? You agree with me? You are the one who wants to cause trouble. Because this prayer point is dangerous. He says, God will overturn. Overturn. Overturn it. It shall be no more. Until he come. Who's right? It is. And God will do what? Give it to him. There's somebody God will set over this land. And our nation will turn around. I say there's someone God will set over this land. And our situation will turn around. So we're going to say, Lord, give the election and the leadership to whom you have chosen. In doing that, he's going to overturn many things. You are going to see some streets happening because you have prayed today. Some things, don't complain when you see many things begin to happen. Just be still and know that God has gone ahead of us. Let's begin to pray. Lord, overturn it. Overturn it. And give it to the rightful person. The person who will do your bidding. The one who you have made a covenant with over this land. We want somebody that God had made a covenant with over Nigeria. Somebody who will not go to the left nor to the right. Somebody that God will empower with courage to do the right thing. Somebody that will not fail God and will not fail the people. Somebody who, who, will, who God has chosen. We are, not, we are irrespective of the religion, the political party, the pedigree of that person, as long as it's a choice of God. That is what we want for this land. That is what we want for this land. Lord, we agree together today that it is the one you have chosen. Lord, choose for us. Choose for us the one you have chosen. You know, the Bible said the lot is cast in the lap. The outcome is dependent on God. Let's ask God to, to establish his king over us. The one he has chosen by himself. We cannot help ourselves. We cannot do otherwise. We don't have the power to face anybody or anybody. We are not asking for a revolution. We are asking for a divine intervention in our land. That the Lord will raise up somebody for us. A leader that will do the bidding of God. A leader that will make the, the, the things to turn around. I want you to be special. A leader that God has entered into a covenant with. He will not do us wrong. He will not do us evil. Because he is dealing with God. Let's ask God to intervene in our affairs. In Jesus' name we pray.
Please, you have the national anthem. Do you? I know some of us don't know it. It's not Nigeria we hailed it. And we will, we will sing the second stanza. We will. <laughs> eh? Not everybody. Do you have it? Google it now. Okay, let's start with the first one. Stanza. He said, We want one nation. Come back, come back, come back. One nation bound in what? Peace. Let's pray. I say, Lord, let this nation be one nation bound in freedom. 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 Economic freedom, spiritual freedom, peace and unity for this land. And so shall it be in the name of Jesus. Let's go to the second stanza. Before you today and declare before your face you have found people standing in the gap for this nation witness it and let heaven respond Lord that you alone will be glorified because of this law our sacrifice is on the altar the sacrifice of the blood the blood that will only speak for this nation and we are asking that this blood will speak for us in the name of Jesus. As we continue, you will continue with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Let us 